Now for an example, an isosceles right angle triangle ABC has the various lengths as listed, so these are the sides that are the same, the other side is different, and we've got some vectors to find there, and we need to find a bunch of dot products. Now the first thing to do in a question like this is to draw a picture. So it's isosceles and it has a right angle. So if we sketch it, looking with the right angle up here, something like this, and the two sides that are the same have a length of three, and the other side is three root two, and what else do we need to know? We need to label it. So AB is three root two, and so this must be C. So BC and CA are both three. All right, so we've got, we'll put the vectors in a different color. So let A, vector A be here. So this is vector A going this way. And vector B is here going in this direction. And vector C is over here going in this direction. Okay, so to know some things about the dot product, and to use that geometric formula, we need to know all of the angles. Obviously, we've got a right angle at the top here, but to find this angle here, we could say the tan of this angle is opposite over adjacent, and 3 over 3 is 1. So the tan of the angle is 1. This must be 45 degrees. And that makes this one over here 45 degrees as well. So we've got the information that we need to get started now. You might want to consider also that this vector, if we consider it continuing along, leaves us with a 135 degree angle out on the sides here. And I've jotted my formula down over on the side. I've put a version with U's and V's in it instead of A's and B's, because that way when I'm subbing something like A in for B, I won't get confused. So the first one here, we need to do vector A dot vector A. Now vector A dot vector A means two equal vectors. So the angle between them will be zero degrees. So that means the cos of zero is one. So all we really need here is to find the length of vector a, which is 3 root 2, and square it. So we need 3 root 2 squared. 3 squared is 9, and root 2 squared is 2, so we get 18. That one was quite simple. And notice we're getting a scalar quantity here when we find our dot product. That's what we're expecting. Now for the next one, we have to be really careful and remember that this definition required that the two vectors involved had the same tail. So if we're finding the dot product between vector a and b, then vector a and b do not have the same tail. But we could make a vector a that sits over here if we just take that vector and start it from here instead and consider that that would be the exact same vector. It's got the same length and the same direction. Then now we've got vector a and b having the same tail and we can see that the angle between them is actually not 45 degrees, it's 135 degrees. So as we go to apply this formula, we need to be careful each time to consider those tails and make sure that they're starting from the same place. So now it's quite straightforward to say we've got the length of vector a, 3 root 2, multiplied by the length of vector b, which is 3, multiplied by the cos of 135. Now the cos of 135 is the same as the cos of 45, except it's negative. So we've got negative 1 over root 2. Now I haven't left myself much room here for working, so bear with me. I've got 3 threes, which is 9. I've got 9 root 2 multiplied by negative 1 over root 2. The root 2's will cancel and I'll just get negative 9. And now that you've seen what I did there, I'm going to just get rid of that working and put my answer there in negative 9 so that I've got a little bit of space for my next question. Obviously you'll set yours out with a little bit more space than I have. Now I can see two different ways to do this next question. Both of them are equally good. Just pick the way that sits in your head the easiest. We could just blindly go ahead and follow our formula, but just multiply our length by 3 and multiply our second length by negative 2. But if we do that, what we've got to consider is that we've got vector A and vector C not having the same tail. So if we did it this way, we'd need to make them have the same tail, which means we'd need to make vector C sit down here. So that now we could say, all right, vector A is going this way like this and vector c is going this way. Obviously we want, we want three lots of vector a so it's going to be three times as long and we want negative two lots of c which means it needs to be twice as long and going in the other direction. But without even considering directions just by using vector c as it was we could just go ahead and 
perform the numerical calculations here. So we'd have three lots of three root two, which would be nine root two. And then we would need to do negative two lots of this length. And we get that. And then we need to consider cos of theta. Now we've just made them have the same tail. So that means that theta is actually 135 degrees. So we need negative one on over root two. Now the root twos are going to cancel and we're going to get a negative times a negative is a positive, and we've really just got six nines, which is 54. Now, if that method sits well with you, go ahead and use it. All we really had to do was make sure that we moved vector C so that it had the same tail as vector A, and then we just multiplied our length by a negative, and we also got a negative out of our angle. Now, a different way that you could approach the same question and get the same answer, but maybe with some different thinking, would be to say, well, if we know that vector C is going in this direction, where's negative C? Isn't negative C going in this direction? Now, in some ways, this makes life a little bit easier because the vector negative C and the vector A, if it's actually still over here, we don't need it out on the side anymore, they've got the exact same tail, right? So now we can actually use 45 degrees as the angle between them. And we can just say, all right, we want three lots of this length, which is nine root two, same as before. And then we want to multiply it. Well, we want this vector, but we want it to be twice as long. Now, we've already taken care of the negative part by just drawing the vector around the other way. So we don't need to multiply the three by negative two now. We just need to say, we want this vector. We just want it to be twice as big. So we'd multiply it, our three by two and just get six. And then we'd multiply by the cos of 45 instead of 135, and we'd get this. Our root twos still cancel and we've got six nines and we get the exact same answer. Now, which way should you do it? Whichever way makes most sense. You can see here I didn't need to multiply my length by negative two because I'd taken care of the negative by rewriting my vector going the other direction. Now for this next one, before we get carried away looking at what vector is vector b minus a, let's just remember that we've learnt the distributive law applies to dot products. And so we can actually just change this and say that we want vector c dot b minus vector c dot a. Now, if we tried to do it some other way and say, well, what is this vector here, b minus a? Because b goes this way and a goes that way, minus a would be this way. And it's very hard to do b and minus a because they've got their tails together and refer it to some other vector c. Best just to do this and then we can sort out our result that way. So c dot b just means we need, okay, here's vector c, here's vector b, they don't have their tails together, but we know that this one, these two vectors are perpendicular. So straight away, this is zero. And vector c and vector a, they don't have their tails together either, but if we're doing negative c, then it would be this other one that goes this way. And they do have their tails together. So if we, instead of subtracting, we could just say, look, we've got nothing from this part. And now let's do negative C and A. And that tells us that we need to do the length of C, which is three, times the length of A, which is three root two, multiplied by the cos of 45 degrees, which is one over root two. The root twos cancel and we get nine. Now again, I realized this part was zero, so I just found this part and I thought about what the vector negative c was and I feel like that made the question easier. But there's another way I could have done it. I could have said, all right, well this part's zero because they're perpendicular vectors. So now let's subtract and I could have freshly said, look, vector c goes this way. Let's return to what we knew from the beginning. And vector A is here and they don't have their tails together. If I want to put their tails together, I'll need to draw vector C down here. And now I've got to use that angle of 135 degrees, which means I'm subtracting. And now I can just find C dot A. And that means I need 3, the length of C, times A, the length of A, times the cos of 135, which is negative 1 on row 2. And you can see here, again, I've now got negative 3 times negative three, I'm still going to get nine. Now, I think that's slightly more complicated. Whichever way you spot is a good way to go. Now for this next one, I could use the distributive law and end up in a world of hurt here. But as with anything, always look for shortcuts. 
consider what vector a plus b plus c really is. Now I've made a bit of a mess of my picture here, but I think you can still see that vector a goes this way, vector b goes that way, vector c goes that way. So if I follow all three of those vector, uh, vectors as instructions, I end up right back where I started, and that's a zero vector. So I've got a zero vector, dot zero vector, and if either of the vectors is a zero vector, or if the lines are perpendicular, I get zero. Notice how my answer is not a zero vector, it's just zero. It's a scalar quantity. All right, last question. Explain why the vector a plus b dot c is going to equal this. Well, again, we can use our distributive law and say that we've got the left-hand side is equal to a dot c and plus b dot c. And we can, if we look at our picture, b dot c, well, they're perpendicular lines, so they're going to equal zero. Uh, so you could write that, I suppose. It says explain, so I guess I'd say um, b and c are perpendicular. Now, you can write that out in words, or you could use that perpendicular symbol, which looks sort of like a t. Therefore, the left-hand side equals just a dot c, which is equal to the right-hand side.